Please, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Increase the faith of those who place their hope in you, O God, and graciously hear the prayers of those who call on you, that we who today hold high these branches to hail Christ in his triumph may bear fruit for you by good works accomplished in him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord the king of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat, it, and sat upon it, as is written, Fear no more, O daughter of Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace, holding our branches high so that we might bless them after the procession. Israel. 
King. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the 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 King. To the Son of David, He goes up to trumpet blast. Hosanna to the Son of David, He goes up in shouts of Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The Lord God has given me a world trade tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you Let's go. 
Alfred me with parted lips and wagging heads. Let the Lord he trust deliver him. Let God say the one he loves. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Many barking dogs surround me. The evil ones are closing in on me. They have pierced me in my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my clothes among them, casting lots for my garments. God, my strength, do not be far from me. Lord, send me your aid. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will shout your name aloud to my brother. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. became obedient to the point of death, even on a cross. 
Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. The bound Jesus led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask for him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy (coughs) that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? (coughs) They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, (coughs) released Barabbas to them, and after after he had Jesus scorched, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of turns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, hey, King of the Jews. And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby. Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, 
Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah when he was in town. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was turned in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and Joses. And Salome, these women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph watched where he was laid. the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
how quickly things change. How quickly things change. Within a span of a few moments, we're raising our palms and praising our God, excited about the prospect of having Jesus as our Lord and Savior and King. We wave those palms and are thrilled with the one whom the Father sent. And then moments later, we scream, crucify him. How quickly things change. It's not just that we're in a liturgical moment, and in this liturgical moment, we go from one thing to the next, but rather that your life and mine has this changeable reality where in one minute we can praise our God and in the next minute turn right away. What is the matter with us? What is the matter with us? Let's be clear, that reality escapes no one. All of us have been born into a broken world where in one breath we can praise our God and in the next we can walk away. Not one of us here, not one of us on the planet, not one of us can excuse ourselves. We can't point the finger and say, she crucified him. He's the one. Because we all heard ourselves say it, not just here in the liturgy, but we see ourselves do it every single day. If we take nothing from today, let these palms be a reminder of the the two natures within us. The spiritual nature that praises our God and our broken, fallen human nature that wants to crucify. Jesus enters Jerusalem on this day as an act of obedience. An act of obedience. Jesus knows what's coming. And yet, he still says yes. And yet, he still enters in. And yet, He still accepts the duplicity, the duplicity of all those acclaiming him the king who he knows will scatter the moment things get tough. He knows our brokenness and he still, in obedience to the Father's will, enters in. May we begin this holy week in obedience. May we take these steps with Jesus, understanding our own brokenness and how much we need this week, how much we need our Lord and Savior 
how much we need to be redeemed, how much we need our brokenness to be made whole. Let us never forget that on any given day, we can proclaim Christ King and sing hosannas. And on the very same day, in the very next breath, we may not ask for him to be crucified, but we turn from his way and walk in another. May obedience allow us to look clearly at that truth and claim our individual and our communal need for a Savior. You may find that a bit too dire. You may find this a bit too troubling. But when the world tries to comfort us in the midst of that anxious reality that we face of our two natures, it gives us so many other ways and methods of assuaging our anxiety and our guilt, none of which ultimately works. There is only one salvation, and it is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Only one salvation. Only one. And so we, in obedience, walk with Jesus to recognize our need, not just mine, but ours, for the saving obedience of Jesus. He came knowing all that. And he loves us anyway. That's what saves us. His unconditional love. Where he says yes to the Father's will in obedience and loves us even when we don't deserve it. And it's that unconditional love that saves us and empowers us to bring that response, to bring that salve, to bring that answer to a world in need by us going out and unconditionally loving, us going out and bringing the salvation that only Christ can give, only his love can save. That's what our world needs. And the only way it will experience it in this life is through you and me. May we accept that not as some invitation that we can RSVP. Well, maybe I want, maybe I don't want. But in obedience, that's the Father's will for you and me. To love unconditionally the people that we don't want to love, the people that irritate us, the people who have hurt us, the people who have crucified us. May this walk this week in obedience, not just be here in church, but be out in our homes, in our workplaces in our schools, in our stores, bringing unconditional love that is the only thing that saves. Amen. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to God now and pray that those who still search for meaning will be drawn to the saving death and resurrection of the Lord. For the church and its leaders that we be a church of mercy that goes out to the margins, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that the passion of Christ will break down the barriers that divide opponents and open new pathways for communication and understanding, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations and their leaders, that they may follow the example of Christ and make service of the least a guiding principle of their work, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elect and the candidates for full communion with the church, that God will deepen their desire for the Eucharist and fill them with love through the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been humiliated and denigrated, that those who face insult and de degradation because of race, ethnicity, religion, or gender may be welcomed and supported by disciples of the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or homebound, particularly those with COVID-19, and especially for those whose names we speak out loud. That there will no recovery from illness and relief from pain, we pray. We pray for all parishioners and visitors. And those prayers submitted to the poor nuns, those written in a parish prayer intention book, and submitted to the prayer line, and for our own needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and especially for those whose names we speak out loud. that they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of love and mercy, from the cross your Son cried out to you, Hear the prayer of your people baptized in his image. Heed our cries and bring us one day to eternal life with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the crucified and risen one, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
There was an error in the printing of our offertory envelopes for today. No envelope was sent to you for the regular first collection. The only envelope that was sent to you was for the second collection today, which is for the Holy Land. Therefore, regardless of the envelope that you use, we will consider anything placed in the first collection basket will go toward regular parish support, and anything placed in the second collection basket will go toward the Holy Land. Thank you for your generosity and understanding.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Philip and Easy, St. Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, Father. Have a blessed week. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Catholics who are not receiving communion today, as well as those of other religious traditions, are invited to come forward in the procession to receive a blessing. Crossing your arms across your chest will indicate to the minister that you wish to receive a blessing. Please join us in singing our communion song.
that bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all may come in faith, find forgiveness at the cross. So we share. Savior Jesus Christ taught for you. Eat and remember the wounds that heal, the death that brings us life. Pay the price to make us one. So we share in this bread of life and we drink of this sacrifice. Sign of our bonds of love around the table of the King.
sinking in the waves You thought you'd walk across the water Now you're sinking down I think about the way things might have been If you'd remained at sea You'd still be a fisherman Peter, Peter You're such a fool Peter, Peter, what are you doing? Crying by the fire You told them you did not know him Now he's gone and died I think about the way things might have been If you'd remained at sea You'd still be a fisherman Peter such a fool Peter, Peter what are you doing hanging upside down Peter, Peter you know you're dying you're dying for your Lord I think about the way things might have been If you'd remained at sea You'd still be a fisherman Peter, you're such a fool Oh, how I'd like to be such a Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder uh, that next Sunday the Mass schedule is very uh, different, so uh, hopefully you received your... Uh, postcard at home that has all those. If you don't, out on the table, uh, we have a whole stack of them. Please uh, make sure you take a note of that, and uh, we'll look forward to celebrating uh, the High Holy Days this week uh, with all of you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and glorify God by the way we live our lives.